Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. In the last 20 episodes of this program, we learned about how to create levels, how to create grid lines. We also learned about how to create walls, windows, doors, furniture, structural columns, structural beams. Today is episode 21 and we are going to learn about how to create structural floor slabs in our project. Let's get started. To create a structural floor slab, let's go into Structure tab and go into Floor. When you activate the Floor tool, the Modify Create Floor Boundary contextual tab is going to open up and it's going to offer you some draw tools available here. We can use these draw tools you can also use pick lines, pick walls, or pick supports option. Let's say I want to create a floor slab on the ground floor level. Let's go to the ground level and use pick walls option because I already have a few walls available here. So I'm going to just pick the walls to create the floor boundary. Let's flip this particular line because I want the floor to go up till the external wall boundary. On the options bar, I have selected extend into wall up to core because I want my floor to go up to the core boundary of my wall. Now let's trim everything up. Whenever you see this pink line mode, it means that there should not be any overlaps, no intersecting lines and no open loops. Looks pretty okay to me. Let's finish this. I'm going to go in my 3D view to check. Yes, we have a floor, structural floor slab available in our ground floor. This particular floor that we created is of the generic 150 millimeter type. Let's say we want a different type of floor in our project. I'm going, I will go into edit type, duplicate. Let's call this concrete 200 millimeter floor. By going into structure edit and opening the edit assembly dialog box. Let's go here and change the thickness to 0.2, which is 200 millimeters. Then let's go to the material window and choose, let's say concrete cast and C2 material. Everything looks okay. If you would like to create a multi-layered floor, you may go and insert a layer, make it above the core boundary or below change the function of this as per your requirements. We talked about these layers when we were working with compound walls. If you haven't checked that video out, please do that. I've given you the link in the description box. But for now, in today's video, we're going to stick with a single layer floor. Let's go into OK, OK. Now, maybe I'm going to cut a section through this and go there. By default, whenever you create a floor, it's the top of the floor slab is going to get aligned with your level line. So the zero offset from the level is going to be the top of your floor. If you want this below or up, you can go into height offset from level and change that. For example, if I make it 0.2, the bottom of my floor is going to align with my ground floor. Let's put it back to zero for now. Now let's say I want to create another floor on my first floor level which is exactly of the same boundary as the ground floor. Can I copy it? Yes, of course. Let's select this floor, press Ctrl C, go to Modify tab and go under the Paste option and choose Align to Selected Levels. Let's choose first floor level from here. You can choose multiple levels if you'd like to create multiple copies on different levels. For now, I'm just interested to copy on first floor level, so I'm going to select that and say OK. There we go. We have exactly the same copy of our floor on the first floor. Of course, if you'd like to make any changes to that, you can select your floor, go to edit boundary, go to a related floor plan and make changes to that. Let's finish that. Here you can see that I have a wall which is overlapping with my floor. Now there are different ways of how you can deal with this. Let's go to the ground floor level, see which wall is this. Maybe cut a section through it and have a look at it in the section view. So this is what is happening to my floor. The wall and my floor are overlapping. One way to change this is to select this and just bring it down. This is basically the same as changing its top offset. I know the thickness of my floor so I can directly go here and say this is minus 0.2 or just drag it to the bottom of the floor. 
Another way of doing this is using join geometry. So I can go into modify, join, and select my floor and join it with my wall. This is going to remove the overlap. But join geometry is usually more memory consuming. So every time you do a join geometry, your project becomes starts becoming a little bit heavier. So do join geometry only when you actually need it. Another way of doing this is using the attach uh, option. So when I select my wall, I have the attach option here. I'm going to attach the top of my wall to the slab that I have just created. If you have attached your wall, if the floor is going to move, let's say I make it 0.5 from the level, the wall is also going to move with it. So basically it is attached to the bottom of the slab. Let's put it back to zero. If you would like to detach your wall, you can always come back to your wall and say detach from the slab. Out of all these options, you can choose the one that suits your project and your needs the most. If you would like to do a hands-on exercise in creating floors, I suggest you go to my website learningrevitonline.com. I've given you the link in the description box here. This tutorial is free and all the tutorial files are available for download from here. It also shows you step-by-step -step procedures to how to add a structural floor slab in your project. And not only that, it also shows you how to create a new floor type and how to copy and paste align your floors from one level to the other. If you would like to get in touch with me for your questions, comments, feedback, please feel free to comment here or get in touch with me through my contact us page that I've given you in the description box. In the next episode, we are going to talk about how to create false ceilings. So please subscribe, stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next.